uh, in our last lecture we discussed uh, what are the essential component of a processor based system in that we discussed that a processor uh, can communicate with the input device output device ram rom and these devices are connected to processor via data bus and address bus apart from these buses read signal and write signal also generated by the processor which are used to uh, activate the device uh, for reading or writing purpose now in today's lecture we will see memory and its interfacing with microprocessor as we know that there are two types of memory one is rom that is read and only memory another is ram that is random access memory so for our discussion we will take one ram you will take one ram now in ram what are the various things available suppose this is a ram this is a ram uh, <coughs> in ram there are various locations there are many memory locations and at each location some bits are stored now generally in most of the cases uh, ram will store 8 bit at one particular location there are rams in which there are 16 bits we can store but we will not discuss about that because in our this syllabus whatever microprocessor and microcontroller we are going to discuss in those processor and controllers the memory which we will connect will have only 8 bits at one particular memory location right so in this ram there are many memory locations so let us assume there that this is memory location number 0 this is memory location number 1 this is memory location number 2 like this there are many memory locations right and at each location 8 bits can be stored so bits can be stored here 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 so here i will write some Uh, suppose this is mm, d0 d1 d2 d3 d4 d5 d6 and d7 so at this location number 0 we can store 8 bits and these 8 bits are from d0 to d7 so bits can be any bits any number can be there for example 00001101 so at this location we are having this number at location number 1 again we have 8 storing place so here we will store 8 bits at location number 2 again we can store 8 bits so in this way at each location we can store 8 bits now how many bits we can store at one location it it gives us the data line of that particular memory so in this memory we can store 8 bits this means this ram is having 8 bit data bus right so this ram will have so these are the data bus t0 to d7 These are the eight data bus, eight data lines, or eight data bus. <coughs> so now here the question is total how many locations will be there in this RAM? So it will be decided by it will be decided by the address bus of this RAM. You always remember. total number of location in this ram will be 2 to the 2 to the power right it can be 
at total locations can be 2 raised to the power 1 or it can be 2 raised to the power 2 or it can be 2 raised to the power 3 like this you go or it can be 2 raised to the power 10 or 2 raised to the power 20 like this so, but the locations will always be 2 raised to the power something so if it is 2 raised to the power 2, 2 raised to the power 1 this means total number of locations in the memory will be 2 here if the memory locations are 2 raised to the power 2 this means total locations are 4 2 raised to the power 3 8 like this right here this raised to the power this this is your address lines of your RAM or ROM. So same concept is applicable to ROM also. So now total how many address line, uh, how many locations are there? It will be decided by address lines, right? So let us assume we will take one example. Suppose this memory is having total 10 address lines. Okay. This memory is having in total 10 address lines. Address lines from A0 to A9. Right? So it, address line starts from 0, A0 and last is A9. So from 0 to 9, these are 10 lines. So suppose we, we just consider one case in which this memory RAM is having 10 address lines. So first thing, first question is how many memory locations are there in this RAM? So simple, to calculate this, to find out this, we write 2 raised to the power number of address lines. This will give you number of locations locations in RAM or ROM. So here 2 raised to the power number of address lines. Number of address lines are 10. So 2 raised to the power 10. How much it comes? So here it comes 1024. 2 raised to the power 10 is 1024. So our RAM which is having 10 address lines will have 1024 locations. Right? So since we start the location with location number 0, so what will be the last location? Last location will be 1023. So from location number 0 to location number 1023, in total there are 1000. 24 locations. Now suppose a RAM is having in place of 10, if it is having suppose 11 address lines, then in that case, total how many locations will be there? 2 raised to the power 11. So 2 raised to the power, power 10 is 1024. So 2 raised to the power 11 means double it. So it will be 2048. If the number of address lines are 12, then locations will be double it. 4096. Right? So if the location is 1, if the address line is 1, total location is 2. Address line is 2, total location double this. 4. Address line is 3, double this, 8, right, in this way. So here, what is the significance of address lines of this RAM? By increasing one address line, we are basically making the number of locations double. So this is the significance of address line. And here, at each location, we can store 8 bits, okay. Uh, 8 bits is equal to how many bytes? 
8 bits is equal to how many bytes? So this is 1 byte. Right? So in this memory, which is having 10 address lines, at location number 0, we are having 1 byte. We can store 1 byte. At location number 1, again we can store 1 byte. At location number 2, again we can store 1 byte. So in total, in total how many locations are there? 1024 locations. At each location, we can store 1 byte. 1 bytes. 1 byte. So total how many bytes we can store? At one location we can store 1 byte. So in 1024 locations, we can store 1000 24 bytes and this is equal to 1 kilo bytes in computer terminology 1024 is equal to 1 k in general mathematics terminology 1000 is equal to 1 k but in computer terminology, 1024 is equal to 1K. So, total locations are 1024. At each location, we can store 1 byte. That's why in 1024 locations, we can store 1024 bytes, which is equal to 1 kilobytes. So, this is 1KB. So, our memory having 8 data lines and having 10 address lines will have a capacity of 1 KB. We can store only 1 kilobyte of data. Right? Now suppose if I say uh, I am having a memory with, with 11 address lines. Right? With 11 address lines. And with 8 data lines. So, what is the capacity of that memory? Capacity means how many bits or how many bytes can be stored in that memory. So, simply first calculate total how many locations are there. So, we know that 2 raised to power 11 is equal to 2048. And at each location, how many bits we can store? This you can find from this data line. So data lines are 8. This means at each location we can store 8 bits. So in 2048 locations, how many bits we can store? 1,048 into 8 bits we can store. And this is equal to 2048 multiplied by 8 bits is equal to 1 byte. So this is equal to 2048 bytes and this is equal to 2 kilobyte. We got 2048 in computer terminology is called as 2K and B indicates byte. So our memory having 11 address lines and 8 data lines will have a capacity of 2K. And if so now we know uh, address lines, data lines, and capacity. Right? So if the you make address lines eight, right? Same. If the uh, sorry, data lines are eight. If the address lines are 10, then the capacity is 1 KB. If the address line 11, capacity is 2 KB. If the address lines 12, capacity is 4 KB. If the address lines 13, capacity is 8 KB. Right? In this way, you can find the capacity of your memory. Right? Now suppose this is one microprocessor, 
with this processor we have attached some memory ram or rom is attached with this processor now suppose this processor is having 30 address lines address lines in that case what will be the capacity of memory that we can connect with this processor so you can calculate this now very easily right now here with the memory we have data lines and we have address lines apart from these two lines there is there is one input pin and this pin is denoted as CS right CS this indicates chip select and I have placed one bubble here so this bubble indicates this is an active low signal right so first thing this pin of the memory is used to select the memory whenever microprocessor wants to communicate with this memory first this memory has to be selected first this memory has to be selected and how we can select this memory to make this pin connected to ground if we will connect this pin to ground then zero will be received by this pin right and this pin is active low pin means whenever you will apply binary zero then only this pin will be activated so here Generally for the active low pins, we use a symbol bar, right? So CS bar means chip select pin and if this is equal to 0, then memory selected and if this is 1, then memory not selected. So whenever you want to select the memory, select means when, when processor will select the memory, when it wants to write something in the memory or when it wants to read something from the memory. At that time processor will select this memory. So to select this memory, first we have to make this CS pin 0. Okay. Now since this is, uh, we are talking about this is one RAM. So in RAM, we can read the content from the RAM as well as we can write the content in the RAM. For that purpose, there are two pins. One pin we call it as read bar. I will write it read bar. This is also CS bar. So why I am writing bar? Because these are active low pin. Right? These are active low pin. Because bubble, I have placed bubble here. This indicates whenever zero is applied to this signal, then only this particular operation will be activated. So here read bar, read bar. Right? So whenever zero is applied here, at that time read operation from this memory will be performed. Right? So if read bar is zero, then read data from memory right so if read bar is 0 then out of these 1024 locations any one location has to be activated and content of that location will be read by processor if we make read bar 0 and if read bar is 1 then no read operation no read operation 
Now, if you want to write something in this memory, then there is uh, another signal, another pin, and that pin we call it as write bar. WR bar. bar. So WR bar, this is write. Okay? And if it is zero, so again here also uh, this signal is an active low signal because I have placed bubble here. So if you will find zero over this line, then write operation will be performed. So if write bar is equal to zero, then write in memory. Right? So when write bar is zero, then 8-bit data will be written in any one of these locations. Right? But at which location content will be written? It will be decided by these address lines. Right? So, and these write and read has to be connected with your this is your processor now. Right? This is your microprocessor. So, this is write and this is read. Right? So, these signals read and write will be generated by timing and control unit of the microprocessor. So, as I told you, timing and control unit will generate few signals which are required by the processor to perform certain operation. So, now this processor will generate read signal to perform a read operation from this memory. This processor will generate write signal to perform write operation in this memory. Right? Now, uh, at what particular memory location data will be written or data will be read out from which particular memory location it will be decided by address lines. So, I will discuss about now how these address lines will decide the particular memory location.